All right, filter design. So let's quickly discuss filters. Let's just steal this little picture here. So normally in filter design, you normally would see something like this, where they say low pass filter looks like, uh, sorry, impressions. A low pass filter looks like this, and a band pass filter looks like that, and a high pass filter looks something like this. So this, they talk about the frequency domain. Frequency domain. So if you look at the frequency domain, let's just change my color there. We know our machine is making a 2 hertz filter. So we know that is our information, and we know that is noise. So theoretically, in the olden days, you would have made a low pass filter, and it will do something like this. You will say, all the frequencies from let's say 0 to 20 let them go through and the ones higher than 20 hertz make them softer and that's where this shape comes from in filter design for a low pass filter for a band pass filter let's say your machine was actually that information but there was a low noise and a high noise and we said all that frequencies i want to let them through and none of the rest so if there was a frequency it would have still gone through but the main one would go through as well. And this is an indication, it's like a multiplier. So multiply that with zero, multiply that with 10, multiply that with zero again. So at the end, you'll only get the piece of information you want. The rest will have been made quieter. So that's normally in uh, analog filters, that was what was happening. So you could have said low pass filter or band pass filter or uh, pass filter. Now, pole zero placement works a little bit different. Pole zero placement say you can have, I want this one to go through. You can put, and we call it a pole. You can put a pole there at two hertz. I want that frequency to go through. And I want to stop this specific one. And I want to stop that specific one. So you can design it more precise. You can put something here as well, maybe there. And you can put some other values there as well. And then this filter would look something like this. So it's not a low pass filter, it's some sort of band pass filter. But it's um it's it's not as analog filter we have to decide. Let me try and explain it differently. Let's say you are interested for some reason in these two signals. Remember, we've deviated from an example again. This, we're interested in this one and we're interested in that one, but we want everything else to be quiet. So we can put a pole there, we can put a pole there, and we can put zeros everywhere else in the filter design process. So this filter design won't be a band pass or a low pass or a high pass. It's going to look something like this, where those two spikes will sit underneath there. So you can have a very customized filter by using pole zero placement. Um, there is going to be a lot of math now to explain how the function works and how to calculate the function for it, but this is in short what's going to happen with the filters. So, back to the software. Sorry, it is going here. So in real life, what will happen? You won't have that signal generation part, you will just have a recording part, you'll record a few values so that you can do a Fourier transform on it. The Fourier will kind of show you what components there are and according to that you can design your filter. Easiest one will be a low pass or just a band pass or just a high pass filter or if it's a more complex one you're gonna have to place poles and zeros where you want. So poles, frequencies you want to go through, zeros, frequencies that you don't want to go through. And to show this, we are now generating our own sine wave or our own signal as if it would have came from the machine. So we've got our 2 hertz one there, which is that one. In this case, I made a 50 hertz noise, a single 50 hertz noise. I also added the 70 hertz extra just to demonstrate that the, it will show you three spikes there. You can take it off again if we need. Then after you've designed, after you analyzed your circuit, this program we're looking at now is just to analyze the circuit. It's not a filter design yet. It's just to see what frequencies there are. It's not the control circuit as well. The control circuit, you won't have 
samples like this because this takes up space in the FPGA. It's unnecessary processing. You want to design something that's real time that's just going to do the functions that you want. Uh, linear time invariant. So as it records there, it's going to give you the clean sample. As it takes a sample there, the needle's not going to jump around. It's going to be at the value that it's supposed to be. So that's what I'm going to show you how to design now.